Morning all. Well, it's the first morning run with a new phone. I've got to say the jury's out. I'm not entirely sure what we'll get to that in a minute. And if you're not into uh, phone chat, then you might want to switch off. This morning, I'm smoking the RC Sands with some 40th anniversary. A really, really nice pipe. Smokes very, very nicely. Nice rustication. Some nice bird's eye on the shank there. This is one that I had converted by Ian Walker. And um, he's done a very good job. And now I'm going to put you on your perch. Hang on. There we are. Let's get this char light going. So far, the pause button is really turning into be a, bo a boon. Just used it now a second ago and you literally can't see a difference. You can't tell, unless you've moved obviously, you can't tell the difference. Uh, I've just remembered, I've left my coffee on a post opposite my house, so I'm going to get that. So we're going to pause. Right, we've picked up, we've rescued the cup of coffee. It was shivering on the post opposite my house. It is very cold at the moment. When I say very cold, I say London very cold. It is not very cold by world standards. Certainly not Canadia land standards. But um, certainly it's cold. And um, I start early in the morning, believe it or not. I get up just after six in the morning. I have a study session before I start my day. And um, it is really cold at that time in the morning. So, the phone. Now first of all, in case you haven't got the patience to watch an hour long video, yesterday's meet up in Oxford with uh, Tree. Bit of a long video, I'm sorry about that. Um, I suppose I could have edited, edited it down. But, um, I don't know. I think it's just nice to sort of give the whole picture the lead up to it and the actual thing itself and then way back a little bit and um, that bit of music that I played it just um, it caught me by surprise it was just I don't know, I don't know. it just really it, it got to me I'm not a huge classical music listener I do listen to classical music but I wouldn't say I'm an avid uh, everyday kind of thing um, music classical music listener I do love some good quality violin uh, playing. I think it's, um, it, it, it has the ability when played right to evoke emotion um, like, I wouldn't say like no other instrument because all instruments definitely transfer the emotion or they have the ability of transferring the emotion of the person who's playing, the musician. I mean, a saxophone can be an, ex a, a, an extremely uh, expressive um, instrument. And certainly some instruments, to my very, very inexperienced uh, musical ear, um, certainly some instruments can express emotion or a person's interior emotions more than others. Um, you know, a bass guitar which a person is going to strum along. It's a bit harder to, to, to really express 
emotion through it, whereas uh, even an acoustic uh, guitar or an electric uh, guitar that can seriously uh, bring through emotion, express uh, what a person's trying to put in through the music. But I think a violin, a violin is exceptional in that area. Because with a violin, you can really mimic can mimic the emotions, not only what, that you're feeling, but also it can mimic the emotions that you vocalize. It can mimic, you know, a person's sobbing, a person's heart-rending uh, cry, um, or a person's joy. Um, and that's just me. I don't know if, if, if people share that, but certainly, I'm sure there are other, instru other instruments as well that do the same. But for me, a violin uh, played well definitely hits the spot. That piece that I played, that was on the radio yesterday, it wasn't specifically violin, but that particular piece, for some reason it was, uh, just felt good. I'm just going to close the roof, it's making a bit too much noise. was the problem of what to keep open to allow the air, to, the smoke to escape. When I'm on a dual carriageway like this, if I open one of the side windows, I tend to get a, a, a sort of a throbbing noise from, I don't know if it's the stuff on the outside that's uh, causing it, but it just goes right through my ear. Anyway, um, so it was very nice yesterday. I had a great time. It's always great to meet up with uh, YTPCers. And have a natter about the hobby. See, it's doing that noise. I don't know if you're getting it, but that noise bothers me. somebody left me a message this morning early um, to all intents and purposes it was on my uh, on the video that I was talking about thinking about doing a, an international pipe show and the person writes um, it's about time you stop putting so much time and effort into the pipe making love to the pipes and spending time on things which are more important in life. And whilst uh, the comment certainly has merit in the broad scheme of things, I just wonder what's going on in his life or her life that makes him make such a comment. Why it bothers somebody that somebody enjoys a passion, uh, sorry, enjoys a hobby. Now, as I say, the comment itself has merit if a person overdoes it to the extent that, to the expense of other people around him. Um, but um, for a person to make that assumption um, is a bit of a a bit of a stretch. A person who doesn't know me in my personal life and how I relate to my family to make a comment like that, making the assumption that I am enjoying the hobby of pipe smoking at the expense of others is um, it's a little bit unkind. To say the least. Anyway, this is getting uh, diversifying a little bit too much on this video. Um, so, somebody made a comment about wanting to hear um, I think it was uh, Carlos he 
he wanted to hear the, uh, my comments on iPhone versus Android. Um, it's a bit premature for that, obviously. I mean, I have had Androids in the past. To be honest, before I had an iPhone, I had um, an Android. I think it was the Galaxy S2. That's how far back it was. And I had that for quite a while. And at the time, it was the other way around. I was struggling to move over to iPhone. I wanted to get an iPhone, but when I tried them, I just couldn't get on with them. And then finally I did get on with them. And then I've struggled since. I've a few times tried to move over to Android and it hasn't worked. And it's kind of, I'm having the same issues at the moment, but um, I'm giving it a little bit more time. Because there are a lot of benefits, which we'll uh, kind of get to. Perhaps I'll do a proper video about it at some point in the future when I've spent more time with this phone. The key advantages for me, which is what the original original reason why I went for Android, Android, was to have that pause function on the record, which I used in this video as well, and that works very very well. It works when you're busy doing the video and nothing else. And if you need to have a pause for whatever reason, it works. But if your phone rings, and once you go off the camera screen, the pause function stops and it, and it effectively stops the recording and you start another recording, as you would on an iPhone. Um, but whilst you're uh, recording and you want to have a pause, you can do that. I think it's a very good function. The other reason, um, which was not specifically Android, was simply that my other phone was giving me a lot of trouble with the, with the voice recording. The sound was giving me, as you all know, was giving me a ridiculous amount of problems. Now, to talk about some of the pros and cons. The main pro of an iPhone is that it's an iPhone. It is straightforward. It was. It's very, very logical. Everything is logical, and it's. If you want to just have a phone and do the functions that you want, you can do it without being distracted. That's impossible on an Android, unless you go for a stock Android like a Pixel or something like that. Which maybe that's something I need to consider. I don't know, but I think even a stock Android will have the same, maybe to a lesser extent, but it'll have the same problems in the distractions. There is so much going on all the time on the phone, the, the, the notifications. Now, unless you're gonna start burying deep into the menus and really customize the phone, um, it's, it's, um, I think you have to be quite techy if you want it to be really customized to your will, essentially. You can't just leave it alone and ignore it all, I suppose. But um, I like I like organization to some extent, and I find it very, very, um, if you like, electrifying. There's always something happening, and it's kind of hitting your senses the whole time. I find the iPhone experience much calmer. I don't know if that rings true with other people, but that's, a, that's been my experience with Android. Having said that, I've tried, I, I use PC at home, Windows, and um, I've got uh, my laptop's Windows 10, and my desktop, where I do most of my processing work, is, is still Windows 7, I think. And I don't really want to change that because my, uh, um, uh, my screen sort of setup, uh, the screen is calibrated, um, and I'd have to buy a new calibrator, a new software, and all of that kind of stuff if I upgrade my main machine to Windows 10. Anyhow, and I've tried to go over to, to Apple um, in the past for my work, and I struggled with that. I've done it a few times and always gone back to PC. So it's interesting how sometimes Apple is no good, but on a phone, Apple is, is, is better for me in terms of a, uh, an operating system. Now, a few of the things which are advantages and disadvantages. One of the things I was looking for is a FaceTime camera, which had autofocus. 
which most of the phones don't have, but the, the later models do have. This one does have autofocus, this S8. But in actual fact, I'm, I'm now finding it a disadvantage because the fixed focus FaceTime cameras, the focal length is pretty good and most of the stuff is sharp. Um, unless you're really putting a, a pipe right up to the lens to show detail, it's fine. Um, if you're holding a, a pipe at reasonable length, um, it's pretty sharp. Um, if I want to with this phone up to the face camera, I can bring the phone right up and it'll focus. The problem with it is on the S8 is that, like for instance, yesterday in the video, that when I had tree in the car, it keeps on focusing and it keeps sort of going in and out as it focuses, and it's very distracting. I find that very distracting, and um, and for me that's 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 a disadvantage for the type of video output that I have. And the same goes for the main camera, the, the rear-facing camera. Um, very nice, sharp pictures. Very, very nice. But I find that the exposure, the metering, is not great. Yesterday when I was driving, you'll have noticed that some of the roads, the pictures, were very dark because it was exposing for the sky. The sky was too bright, so it was bringing, stopping it down, and therefore the ground was dark. And that's a common problem in, in most cameras, but I find that the iPhone just handles it a bit better. I find that the iPhone has a higher um, dynamic range, and it's able to bring out the darks whilst not blowing out the, the brights. Um, so I think that the, the, whilst the probably the lens and the resolution of the S8 is better than my S. Uh, 6S, the iPhone 6S. Um, I still think that the overall image on the iPhone is very pleasing. Now, one of the things I'm finding the most disconcerting, and it may well be down to settings, is the screen itself. Not the quality of the picture when you're taking a photo, but the screen that I'm looking at, the actual screen of the phone. It's extremely punchy and it's very attractive, very colorful. But it's overly so. It's too. It's oversaturated. It's much too high contrast. The dynamic range of the screen is is very poor. Um, I find um, the the blacks are much too black, and you don't see. Um, you can't see the shadows at all. Um, I find it much too saturated, and I haven't quite worked out yet how to deal with that. I have played around with the settings. I have played around with the screen modes and so on, and improved it a modicum, but really not enough. And I find that off-putting and I thought that transferred to I thought perhaps it was a, an, an accurate uh, description of the recording it was making but um, in actual fact when I was doing the live on Saturday night um, on the screen it looked okay um, on my when I was viewing it on my desktop screen it looked fine so it's really just the screen on the phone itself which is an issue um, I am missing the home button I must say that and I find that um, I am pressing too many things by mistake, um, being a full screen. Um, it is nice to have that larger screen, but in, uh, in the real world, there's not a lot of advantage with it. Um, because when you're taking a picture, the, the, the ratio is the same as a normal picture. It doesn't, um, I, I assume you can take it wider if you want to, but there isn't really much point because you're gonna end up, people uh, looking at the pictures afterwards, will end up with a weird ratio, like a widescreen ratio when you're doing a horizontal picture, a landscape picture. I do like the USB-C uh, connector. And I think um, anything other than Apple should really adopt it um, because I was never happy with a, with a micro USB. It always seemed a bit flimsy, and whenever you put a, 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 um, a, a cable into the end of a phone, it always felt a bit insecure to me. And the USB-C is, is very, very good. I really do like that. So, 
Um, I mean, there are some phenomenal functions. There's no question about that. And I do playing around with them. I do enjoy playing around with them. But as I say, in the in the real world, you know, there's a limit to how much you can do that. That's not what you buy a phone for. Well, at least I don't. Another big advantage of the S8, though, is the fact that the you don't have to be subservient to the Apple operating system. Whilst the Apple operating system is a huge advantage, it's also a disadvantage. If you want to put videos onto your phone, music onto your phone, I find the whole Apple experience very cumbersome. I don't enjoy it. I find that the the um, the iPlayer, uh, not iPlayer, the um, the software, the Apple software on, on your desktop, I find it very contraintuitive. I'm not saying it's difficult, I'm just saying it's it's I don't think it's well thought out, I think it's cumbersome. And they should be able to simplify how you move music over. Um, and I know that their um, ecosystem is, is to try and keep security um, at a premium and I understand that. I just think their front end is pretty basic, pretty ugly and it's just not very helpful. Getting movies and, and videos and stuff like that onto your phone is a hassle. If I want to, if I'm standalone and I want to copy a video off my phone, I can't do that. I mean, you can copy it, but if I want to copy, sorry, if I want to copy a video onto my, my phone and I don't have Apple software and I've got a video on my computer and I want to copy it onto my phone, I can't do it. I understand the reasons, the security behind it, but surely there must be a way, an, another way of doing it um, without having to absolutely have to have uh, the Apple software on your computer. So at the moment I'm on the fence and it's very possible that if I stick with it a bit longer I'll get to like the S8 more. I don't dislike it at the moment. But I'm starting to get, you know, I'm going past the uh, honeymoon period, if you like, and really seeing what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. And the key thing that I'm looking at is the main reasons why I bought it. Are they actually a big improvement on the iPhone? And it's very possible as well that the latest iterations of iPhone are dealing with those issues. <coughs> but I'm not quite ready to spend that kind of money on a phone. So it might be worth my while just getting a different iPhone and then in a year or two's time I'll upgrade. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think at the moment if somebody was to ask me to make a choice I would find it very hard because there are definite distinct advantages and disadvantages of, of both and bear in mind that I'm comparing it to an iPhone 6s and that's it not beyond I don't know what the other iPhones bring um, I would assume that the software and, and the operating system are going to be pretty similar I know that there are some functions being brought in um, but essentially the, the ecosystem is, is going to be similar experience the 6S is up updated, so besides for hardware restrictions, pretty much the operating system is the same. I was always very happy with the picture, with the video and the pictures on, on the 6S. And um, on, the, on the S8, uh, the video was fine, I think, besides for the issues with the focusing. Um, but the pictures, I still find that they are over-processed. I do find them over-processed, over-sharpened, um, and it's a, bit, a little bit too much smoothing going on. It's not real. And as a photographer, certainly, I, I, the pictures that I take, I want them to be real. I don't like things which are over-processed.
So that's a few of my initial thoughts, first impressions if you like, of the um, Samsung Galaxy S8 versus the, S, uh, the 6S, the iPhone 6S. Now some might say that it's not a fair comparison because the 6S is older than the S8. I guess the S8 is probably was around the same time as the iPhone 7, possibly even the 8. And one of the reasons I hesit hesitated to get a uh, 7 or an 8 is the loss of the headphone socket on the uh, on those versions. Now I know you can get adapters and so on, but when I'm doing the videos, especially when I'm doing the lives, I've got the power plugged in at the same time as a microphone, so both sockets are needed. Um, when using the adapter, I assume you can do both at the same time, and that should be fine, it's not an issue. And when you're out and about, um, it's probably okay. Um, using um, the lightning socket. Interestingly, when I was doing the, when I did the live, I was experimenting with and without the mic, I didn't see a big difference, and I don't know if that's to do with the fact that put a lack of compatibility with the S8, or if the S8's onboard mics are so much better than the iPhones, um, and not much of an improvement on the lavalier. The lavalier that I've got is a cheapie. I should really invest in a decent one, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get a Rode one. But the Rode um, Video Me or Mic Me, whatever it's called, which I tried, wasn't good. It was too distant, it was much too quiet. And I really don't understand people that, um, unless they're doing post-production editing and they're boosting the game, um, I don't understand. I've seen some of the videos doing reviews on the, the Video Me, the one that plugs into the phone, um, and they were raving about it, and these are professional videographers, and I couldn't understand how they're doing that because I found it too quiet, and people watching the channel found it too quiet. I think the lavalier is a very good option. It brings the mic right up, you know, close to the source of the sound, and it helps, I think it helps a lot. I think a very good feature would be to have some way of increasing the gain on the microphone um, on the iPhone or on the S8. I don't know if there is such a function. Um, perhaps you'd have to download a, a video app. Um, but it would be good if there'd be some way of doing that. I have to look in the software, maybe there is, and I haven't seen it. The build quality is superb on both. I haven't really had any issues with build quality um, so far on the S8, certainly not, it's only been a few days. And on the iPhones, I haven't had any issues at all. The only issue that I've got is that microphone, and I don't know if that's a physical issue, or if it's a bug. Uh, but the chances are the microphone itself may be a bit loose, I don't know. For some reason, it's, the volume is high and then low. I don't know why that is. Anyway, I think I've been going on long enough. And I hope it hasn't bored the pants off you. This RC Sands pipe is very, very nice. It still needs breaking in, but uh, the mechanics of it are superb. anniversary is very nice as well but it's not giving me its best being that it's a newish pipe so possibly not the best blend to smoke in a, a new pipe um, well it's a good blend to smoke in any pipe but it's probably not the most sensible thing to smoke given its scarcity 
want to make the most of it. <coughs> I wish you all a fantastic day and I will catch you on the next one.